Hi and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we're here for our final block. It's a jack-o'-lantern that we're making and this is part of our Halloween mini quilt wall hanging. So let's get started. So we're here to make the jack-o'-lantern block and it's the last block in our little mini quilt wall hanging series. So today we are just going to be working with several different colours. We've got some orange, uh, which we've worked with this one before, and we've got some plain orange, we've got a little bit of green for the stem and then we've got black for the face of the jack-o'-lantern. You're also going to need your pattern. Now you'll find your pattern over on our website and you'll find the same thumbnail as you've seen here. And that's where it is just click on it just make sure that you do save it to your um device to your computer and print it out through adobe uh, because if you print it out through just by clicking on it and printing it from um the browser it'll actually come out a little bit smaller and we don't want that so you want to actually save it to adobe and print it through that all right so you're going to need a few other things if you've been here for the other videos you already know what all this stuff is but just in case you're new here and you've um, just clicked on this video and have no idea what we need you need your general sewing supplies you need a working sewing machine you also need an iron and an ironing pad you need your fabric so as i said you need some black a couple of oranges and a little bit contrasting and a little bit of green I've just dived into my scraps and pulled out what I had available. Um, and you're going to need some paper scissors or, and a paper rotary cutter if you so choose to use that. Um, some thread snips which will stay over at your sewing machine. You will also need a rotary cutter for final trimming up. And a couple of other items that I like to use is the Add A Quarter Plus um, pack. And I've got a link down below where you can actually get that and um, then you will have that to work with. All right, you're also gonna need some quilting rulers for squaring up. A glue pen is also handy for sticking down our first piece of fabric and any really large ones. And um, I like to also use this Violet um, Craft Seam Roller. So you will find a link down below for that as well. And those affiliate links are all current and I've double checked them. So Click on those and it'll take you straight to where you can get them from. All right, so you're also going to need some wonder clips and pins and a little piece of cardboard or perspex, uh, sorry, or template plastic. And um, this will help you in just a moment. You'll get to see how it all comes together. Now, if you are new here and, <coughs> excuse me, and you want to make this block but you've never done foundation paper piecing before, check the, the video that I've got carded up the top here and also linked down below for our beginner's guide to um, doing a little project, not so big. It gives you close-ups at the, the sewing machine on where you're supposed to sew and all that sort of stuff. So go and check that out and then that way you will be able to be up to date with what's going on. All right, so we're going to get stuck straight into this and um, basically if you've been here for the other ones, you already know what we're doing with the foundation paper piecing. So I'm going to just do this and work through it and uh, basically not give any sort of instruction or anything because we've already had it in the other three videos. So it's essentially exactly the same thing, except this time we've got a few extra colors and you can see how it's all um, shaded out. Now, I once I've finished all the, the bits and pieces, we'll come back and basically we'll do the assembly. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna methodically work through it and there's just one thing that I uh, wanna say. You will notice on your pieces that they're, the shading for the two oranges are very close, but they're slightly different. So um, when you print this out, make sure um, if you print it out in black and white, just put a mark, okay, on in pencil or wherever, just a little cross or something like that of the different colors. So that's your contrasting color, okay? And just find all those contrasting pieces throughout. And then that way you know that that's, um where your contrasting color goes okay so that way you won't get confused so just do that if you print it out in black and white because you don't necessarily have to um print it out in color i've just done that for on um camera and if you um have printed out black and white don't forget to put green 
um, here or brown if you're using brown, whatever you're using for your stem, I'm using green, okay? And the, the rest, you will be able to tell the, the shading that of what is colour and everything else, but you will definitely need to mark those um, other ones. All right, so as I said, we're going to be working fairly methodically. I forgot to pull out my white fabric, so you also need some white fabric as well for the background, so don't forget to grab that out as well. All right, so I'm going to just start working from, from here and um, like I always do.
Okay, so we have all our pieces and now we just have to do our assembly. So we'll get all our bits and pieces into where they need to go. And that is like that. And that one goes in there like that. And then this one goes in here like that. All right, so the first ones that we are going to assemble, okay, and hopefully you can see all that on camera. So we've got A, then we've got B, D, C, and E. So you can see there that that's how the layout's going to go, and we've got some interesting angles here. So the first two pieces that we're going to put together is D and E. Okay, and we're just going to line them up. I'll just get rid of that little piece of fabric there. Okay, and we're going to line them up right sides together. Okay, and make sure that our raw edges are lining up. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of wonder clips and pop that on. Now there are no, from what I can see, there are no seams that we need to line up. Okay, it is just basically our raw edges. And obviously we want to make sure that these are not um, going past. That's all lined up really nicely, so you can see there. Okay, and then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and we're going to stitch on that line. Okay, so get rid of all your long threads. And then we're just going to roll that back. Okay, just finger press that or use your roller and that's our face done. All right, then we're going to take C and again, we're going to line up our raw edges. If you find that your little bit of fabric on the edge is moving, just put a, a little bit of glue there and that'll just hold it in place for you. Okay, let to lay down. Okay, and we're just going to line up our raw edges and use our wonder clips again. And then we'll head over to the sewing machine and again, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, get rid of your long threads and roll that back. Okay, give that a little bit of a roll. Okay, and now we're going to put our next side on. So that is B, and again, exactly the same thing, lining up all our, all our raw edges, and then we'll stitch on that solid black line. Okay. All right, and don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Get rid of our long threads, roll that back, and then we're ready to put our last piece on. All right, so this piece here just goes on like so and we just line up our raw edges again and our side edges as well and then just pop some wonder clips on, head over to the sewing machine, stitch that down, make sure that you um, back stitch at the beginning at the end. And because it is a little bit of a longer um, seam, put your needle in the down position. So if you do have to readjust, you can do that quite easily. All right, let's head on over. All right, so now you just roll that back and there we go. That is our jack-o'-lantern uh, block. Now give that a really good press and set that aside and um, that's it. We're done. All right, so I've given that a really good press. That is our block. Set that aside and join me again tomorrow for final assembly. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed making the gorgeous jack-o'-lantern that we've got. Uh, here and uh, don't forget to join me again tomorrow for our final assembly when we start to put our um, all our blocks together. So at this point now what you can do is remove all the paper off the back of all your blocks, give it a really good press, don't use any starch but just give it a really good press and then join me again tomorrow for the final assembly video. Have a great day everybody and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.